Welcome, we're back with the Utes and today I'm finally going to put something in that you guys have probably seen lying around here for a while. These things. Now as some of you who are following this build series will know, I've got myself a stock standard three seater gas powered Falcon Ute. And these things come with standard seats. But today I'm going to try and fix that. Oh, these things are heavy. <laughs> these are obviously from a BA or BF Falcon Ute. They're from the XR series. And while the cars are the same, they're not. These seats um, are a little bit different. While I put these in, I'm gonna try to work it out as I go along the way. I don't think it'll be too hard. I've got a few bolts that I've gotta take care of. And um, basically what I'm gonna do is start with the passenger side because I think that's going to be a lot easier. Now this is a three seat ute and I've only got two seats, but that's okay because the seat in the middle stays where it is. This shouldn't be too hard, but follow along. Let's see what adventures we get up to today. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put some gloves on because I don't want to cut up myself while I'm doing all of this. And I'll just mention these seats are really awesome. Say what you will about Ford build quality if you're not a Ford guy. I know they're the running joke of most car guys, but these seats are excellent. They go in all sorts of cars because they last. They were built really well, they're tough, and um, they look good. With that little plug for Ford out of the way, um, the first thing I've got to do is take some plastic trim pieces out. I've got a trim piece here and one back here as well, and another one, itty bitty one just down there. Can you see that? Oh, I'm excited. I want to get these seats in here. There we go. That one came off real easy. I'll get that in a minute. Anyway, that's one, that's two. It's a perfect example. I didn't cut my hands at all because I got cut proof gloves on. Link in the description if you want to pick up a pair of these. They're getting a bit worse for wear because I've done several big jobs with these but um, they've lasted me months and months. So check them out. But anyway, trim piece off. So you got these little clips here that clip into there. Oh, look at this. Bonus pen. All right, let's get this other little one off real quick. That one, trim piece. Go, that's two and there's the last trim piece there all right so you've got these little hexagonal torx bolts here one over there and then two on the front and don't forget your plugs so I might do the plugs first hmm should I disconnect the battery you know what there's no airbags in these things so I don't think I will I think I'll leave my battery as it is but you at home probably should. That's one. Huh. How does the second one come out? So the bonus of having a spare seat that you're going to put in is I can just check the plugs on this seat. How does this work? Oh, okay. Looks like this gray second one plugs in from underneath. So I will have to unbolt the seats first. I'm gonna take a good guess here. I'm gonna guess T45. Am I right? Is it a T45? Oh, one off, I reckon. T50. Yeah, I was one off. It's a T50, so four T50s. Let's get those undone. Alright, with those four bolts removed, I should be able to just lift up this seat over here and undo this last plug. There we go. Alright, let's get the sucker out. I'm gonna try to do this without scratching my brand new side skirts. There we go. There we go. Now, as you can see, my standard seats actually look pretty good and I might even try to sell these you know reclaim some of my money from buying these but uh, these are just sportier they're uh, more of a bucket seat compared to these but even these seats are very very comfy but anyway there's a difference between the two these are just leather perforated they've got this 
grippy material in the middle. It's a little bit looser than I'd like it, but it's not too bad. I've seen a lot of worse examples of these before. The one thing I don't like is this is blue and uh, I would much prefer it to be green because this is a green top barra. It's a gas barra and um, yeah, the illumination in the car is green. So this is kind of putting me off a little bit, but comment below, can I use some sort of um, fabric or vinyl dye to change the color of these to green. I think if I can do that, it would really help tie in these seats to the rest of the car. I really like these, you know, they got all these nice little perforations and uh, uh, these suction cuppy things on the fabric, a little bit more, this perforation stuff there, as opposed to my old seats, which are really good. They're just standard and uh, I don't know, I got bored. I want better seats. Anyway, it's quite clean in here. I'm very surprised because I do know that this car was used extensively for, um, for work, but um, it's actually not too bad in here besides some change and some loose connectors and whatnot, a pen and an M&M wrapper. Yeah, things are pretty good in here. So let's do a quick vacuum. And then let's throw these suckers in. Oh, how cool is this? Look, it's even got lumbar support. Can you see that? Hmm, very cool. Now, I don't know about you, but I much prefer this over this one. Oh, feels good too. Yeah, that's nice. I'm liking the lumbar support. That's really good. All right, we got one done. Let's do the other one. So the things are a little different on this side because if you've got a three seat you like me, you got Mr. Handbrake in the way. Now, if you've got a two seat car, that is going to be over there. So you don't have to worry about that. But for me, as you can see, this seat here is a little bit different to this seat over here, which has this electronic adjustment for the height of the seat. Now, I don't know whether I can use that yet. I'm about to find out and you can see that there's a couple of motors um, that control this, but this lever is in the way of my handbrake cable. So we've got a little bit of figuring out to do. Obviously you two seat guys don't have to worry about this, but for my three seat column shift buddies, I'm gonna show you how to do this. Let's go. So taking a closer look at this seat, the new one with the leather and the good one. I've got three plugs, one, two, three. And I think this extra plug is what's going to decide whether I'm going to use this function or not. If I can't get this to work, the up and down motion of the seats won't work. So these two motors are basically redundant. In which case, I'll probably just change this seat base, but let's see what's going on in the car. To start with, I'm gonna take the plastics off and undo the screws. More coinage. Ah, check it out, perfect. Look at that. I've got my third, third plug in there. So we might be in luck. We might be able to use the electronic function on the other seats. Okay, I was a little bit wrong. Um, this is attached to the seat. So I'm gonna take these plastic things off and let's see what's underneath. Yep, looks like these two bolts will get this undone. Yep, perfect. So I'm just gonna tuck that in there. Don't scratch anything. Gotcha. 
All right, I've got both seats here. Let me show you what's going on. So the bases are quite different. This is the one from the three seat ute. Things are quite simple. We do have three plugs, uh, two wires coming out of this one and it's going into this. It might be seatbelt pretensioner or something to do with a handbrake or some sort of solenoid. I'm not really sure. Now on the XR6 seat, we do have three plugs too, but out of this, there are four wires coming out. And I think two are going to this same solenoid. The other two are going to these two motors. All of this, it's operating this. Now, I'm pretty sure that this operates the seat base and it makes it go up and down. So the front and the back goes up and it goes down as well. And that's what these are for. They basically pivot the seat in the front up and down front and back. To be quite frank, these seats are quite high from factory to begin with, so I don't foresee any um, situation where I want the seat to be higher. I'd like it to be as low as possible. And that seat is set as low as possible. Um, this one has the capacity to go up, but uh, I'm not gonna need that. So I'm gonna basically avoid using all of this stuff. It just adds more weight to the car. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this seat rail onto this XR6 seat. This seat rail also contains this uh, holder which holds the handbrake cable. This one does not. It does have the positioning holes. If you did wanna swap these out, you'd have to punch these out and move this bracket over to here. The other thing you would need to do if you wanted to maintain or keep the power adjustment for the seat height, you wouldn't need to swap the rails, but I've got these mounting brackets for the handbrake over here. This switch is in the way, but it's not a big deal. What you would need to do is swap over this cradle over here onto this one that's positioned over there. So you'd have to grind this off and weld it onto here and then basically cut this out with a Dremel and just move this button over here to, to this side over here and then what that'll do is it'll keep your adjustments you can move this cable there's plenty of leeway and that will allow you to keep all your power adjustments while moving the handbrake cable back into its original position you'd obviously have to move this plastic piece as well so that your handbrake cable mounts properly onto your new seat I've decided not to do all of that because, well, I just, I don't, I don't see um, the benefit of doing all that work simply for your seat to go up and down. I'm happy for it to be in the lowest position. So all I'm going to do is swap these rails out. Now to swap the two rails out is four bolts. So you've got one in there, down there as well. And then there's one in there and one up there. So you're going to need a 13 millimeter socket. Now this is ready to come away, as you can see. Just like that. You're just gonna need to undo this plastic bit. So, like that. And there are two screws in here, so just undo those. That's one, two. Okay, so this will come away. Just like that. Alrighty, so the XR6 seat now has its base completely removed. Let's do the same to this thing. There we go. Alrighty, and now it's just a matter of bolting this seat to this rail. Reattach the clips. Put this trim piece back on. Screws go back in. And the cap goes back on. There we go. Woo. Now, I can tell you, if you want to do some weight reduction, consider not putting this in the car. 
I mean, if you want to adjust the height of your seat, you can, but weight reduction, bro. All right, final stretch. I just have to remember how this goes back in. If you've got a three-seater like me, don't forget to hook your handbrake cable back on. Front bolts in. Plugs in. Your handbrake cable back on. Three bolts in. Secure the handbrake cable. Cover goes back on. And last but not least, and there we go. Beautiful. There it is, how easy was that? Give yourself about an hour or two and you should have these beauties put in. Definitely worth it, feel much better than the original stocky ones. Whether you wanna put that seat base in that adjusts the height is completely up to you. I didn't bother, weight reduction bro. I hope you liked this video and if you like how this thing turned out, I want you to give me a like because it really helps me out. Also, if you wanna see more YouTube DIY videos on this ute, then make sure that you subscribe and you check out the other videos in the playlist. All in all, very happy. Very, very nice little upgrade. You really only need a few basic hand tools, as you saw, a few sockets, a few um, screwdrivers and whatnot, a couple of cable ties, and you should be good to go. Anyway, that is how you put XR6 seats into a standard jute. But enough chit chat from me. If you like what you saw, go ahead and try this on your car.